Message 13 Continuation According to Matthew, there are three aspects concerning the kingdom of the heavens, the reality, the appearance, and the manifestation. The reality of the kingdom of the heavens is the inward contents of the kingdom of the heavens in its heavenly and spiritual nature, as revealed by the new king on the mountain in chapters 5, 6, and 7. The appearance of the kingdom of the heavens is the outward state of the kingdom of the heavens in name, as revealed by the king on the seashore in chapter 13. The manifestation of the kingdom of the heavens is the practical coming of the kingdom of the heavens in power, as unveiled by the king on the Mount of Olives in chapters 24 and 25. Both the reality and the appearance of the kingdom of the heavens are with the church today. The reality of the kingdom of the heavens is the proper church life, which is within the appearance of the kingdom of the heavens, known as Christendom. The manifestation of the kingdom of the heavens will be the heavenly part of the coming millennial kingdom, which is called the kingdom of the Father in chapter 13, verse 43. The earthly part of the millennial kingdom will be the Messianic kingdom, which is called the kingdom of the Son of Man in chapter 13, verse 41, and which will be restored a tabernacle of David, the kingdom of David, Acts 15.16. In the heavenly part of the millennial kingdom, which will be the kingdom of the heavens manifested in power, the overcoming believers will reign with Christ a thousand years. In the earthly part of the millennial kingdom, which will be the kingdom of the Messiah on earth, the safe remnant of Israel will be the priests teaching the nations to worship God. If we are poor in spirit, the kingdom of the heavens is ours. We are in its reality now in the church age, and we shall share in its manifestation in the kingdom age. According to the teaching of the four Gospels, there is a crucial difference between the kingdom of the heavens and the kingdom of God. If you would understand Matthew, you must differentiate the kingdom of the heavens from the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is simply the divine ruling. It is God's ruling from eternity past to eternity future. Thus, the kingdom of God refers to the divine government, the rule of God. Between eternity past and eternity future, we have the paradise of Adam, the patriarch, the nation of Israel, the church, and the millennium. The millennium is divided into the upper part and the lower part. The upper part is called the kingdom of the Father, and the lower part is called the kingdom of the Son of Man, and the kingdom of the Messiah, which is the restored kingdom of David. Everything from the paradise of Adam to the new Jerusalem is included in the kingdom of God, which extends from eternity to eternity. The kingdom of the heavens is a part of the kingdom of God, just as California is a part of the United States. Because the kingdom of the heavens is part of the kingdom of God, it is sometimes called the kingdom of God. For example, California, part of the United States, is sometimes called the United States. When someone from abroad comes to California, he may say that he has come to the United States. Although California may be called the United States, the United States cannot be called California. Likewise, although the kingdom of the heavens may be called the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God cannot be called the kingdom of the heavens. Matthew chapter 21 verse 43 indicates that the kingdom of God would be taken away from Israel. For the kingdom of God to be taken away from Israel indicates that it is already with was with Israel. If it had not been with Israel, how could it have been taken away? Although the kingdom of God was there already, John the Baptist said, Repent, for the kingdom of the heavens has drawn near. On the one hand, the kingdom of God was there. On the other hand, the kingdom of the heavens was not yet there. Even when the Lord spoke to the Jews in chapter 21 regarding the kingdom of God being taken away from Israel, the kingdom of the heavens had still only drawn near. It was not until the day of Pentecost that the kingdom of the heavens came. Therefore, in the first parable in chapter 13, the parable of the sower, 
The Lord Jesus did not say the kingdom of the heavens is likened to a sower, because he was already the sower before the day of Pentecost. Pentecost was the fulfillment of the second parable, the parable of the test. Thus, in introducing the parable of the Lord Jesus, say, the kingdom of the heavens was likened to. By all this, we see that the kingdom of God was already present before the kingdom of the heavens came. The kingdom of the heavens is composed of two sections. The first section is the church, and the second section is the upper part of the millennium. All genuine Christians are in the church today, but only the overcoming Christians will be in the upper part, the heavenly part of the millennium. What we have in the church today is the reality of the kingdom of the heavens, not the manifestation. The manifestation of the kingdom will not take place until the millennium. The manifestation of the kingdom of the heavens will be seen in the upper part of the millennium. Those who are poor in spirit are blessed, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens. Notice that the Lord did not say, for theirs is the kingdom of God. When we become poor in our spirit, we are ready to receive the heavenly king. When he comes in, he brings the kingdom of the heavens with him. Immediately after receiving the heavenly king, we are in the church, where the reality of the kingdom of the heavens is. If we are the overcomers at his coming back, the Lord will bring us into the manifestation of the kingdom of the heavens. To have the kingdom of the heavens is firstly to participate in the proper, normal church life, and secondly to inherit the manifestation of the kingdom of the heavens in the upper part of the millennium. This is the meaning of the words, for theirs is the kingdom of the heavens. Those Christians who backslide will lose the reality of the kingdom of the heavens in this age and will miss the manifestation of the kingdom of the heavens in the coming age. What a blessing it is to be poor in spirit. If we are poor in spirit, ours is the kingdom of the heavens. Hallelujah for the first blessing and for the kingdom of the heavens. How good it is to be poor in our spirit.